Welcome to Utah State University's Vertebrate Paleontology course. My name is Benjamin Berger. In this video, we will summarize the Mesozoic birds that lived during the Cretaceous period and highlight the diversity of early birds. The oldest fossil bird is Archaeopteryx. While a number of fossils have recently been advocated as knocking Archaeopteryx off this early perch. One of the most remarkable is the dinosaur, and Chia Ornis, which is about 10 million years older than Archaeopteryx, and close resembles an early bird, but lacks the groove in the coracoid for the supracoidocoideus tendon, and hence is often considered a dinosaur, despite having feathered wings. Winged feathered dinosaurs were not uncommon during the early Cretaceous, with a number of excellent specimens of the four-winged dinosaur Microraptor. Microraptor was a small, raven-sized dinosaur that could fly and had feathers on both its arms and legs, providing four surfaces to generate lift for flight. Microraptor is believed to have been colored black due to microscopic study of the cellular structure of the pigment cells, melandosomes, in the feathers. Microraptor had an unfused manus a hand with claws, a long bony tail, teeth, evidence of being a small predator, and a medium-sized sternum that made it a short-distance flying dinosaur. Another early protobird is Raha avis, which is known from the late Cretaceous of Madagascar. Now, some people place Raha avis as a dinosaur, but it features a couple features in the bones to indicate that it might be an early bird such as a fused syncecrum, a pelvis, and reversed hallux bone. Unfortunately, we don't have a coracoid bone to make the diagnosis of it either truly being a bird or a dinosaur, for the only known specimen is a fragmentary skeleton. Another intriguing fossil is Joho ornis from the early Cretaceous of Asia. It has a couple of advanced bird-like features, including the lack of teeth, although one species still retains teeth. And while retaining a bony tail, Joho Ornis exhibits a bushy feathered tail with long plumes, which make it resemble a tiny peacock-like tail. The next group of Mesozoic birds are all considered true birds, and they feature what is called a Pygiostyla, which is basically a terminal caudal vertebrae and they completely lack the long bony tail. These are the Confucia ornithidae, and they lack teeth with a fairly well-developed beak. If you saw a Confucia ornithidae, you would likely classify it as a bird. The group is characterized by its twinned tail feathers. These birds live during the early Cretaceous of Asia. The next group are by far the most diverse of the Cretaceous birds, the Enant Ornithians, which are found all around the world. They are small, sparrow-like birds, which featured teeth, but have all the characteristics of modern birds, such as a broad sternum, loss of a bony tail, and a fuse in sacrum. These tiny birds were highly successful during the Cretaceous and lived alongside the dinosaurs. One additional advanced feature they have was a fused tarso metatarsalis and the presence of an oyola, which is a freely movable first digit, and they were really good flyers. One unusual member of the N. antiornithians is Gobiopteryx, which is toothless and found in the same deposits as Velociraptor in Mongolia. Two late Cretaceous birds from South America include Patagonioptrix and Feronia, indicating that birds were global in their distribution during the Cretaceous. By the end of the Cretaceous, birds became specialized for aquatic lifestyles, and several members lost the ability to fly. These aquatic birds are called the Hesperornithiformes, and their fossils are known from North America, where their bones are found in the marine units of the Western Interior Seaway. The seaway split the continent into two during the late Cretaceous. There are two genera of Hispernornithiformes, Hispernornis 
and Baptoornis. These toothed birds used their teeth to prey on fish in the ocean and had reduced their wings and were flightless. They had large feet to kick and swim in the water and were likely excellent divers. In the same rain deposits in North America are found larger birds that were able to fly great distances, the Ichthya ornithiformes. It was a group of toothed shorebirds with large wings and a very large keeled sternum. These birds were likely long distance flyers, similar to living seagulls. The bird had a very advanced anatomy, such as a large sternum, fused syncecrum or pelvis, and fused tarsal metatarsal bones in the ankle. Overall, birds during the Cretaceous were very diverse and much more common than previously assumed. You should be able to summarize their diversity and recognize the major groups of these Mesozoic birds. In the next lecture, we will discuss how birds were able to survive the KT boundary, which killed off the dinosaurs. What made birds survivors? Thank you for watching. If you'd like to learn more about Utah State University's geology program, check out the website geology.usu.edu or my own website at benjaminslashberger.org. Links can be found in the description below.